The scientific method is something that you go through every single day. Stick around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll also be showing you how to make a spot on cup of tea. Roll titles. The scientific method involves going through a few basic steps in order to get some reliable information on something. First of all, you ask a question. Then, you go and do a little bit of research to see what information is already available about answering that question. Then, you give a hypothesis, which is basically just a prediction as to what the answer is to your question. From there, you plan an investigation and carry it out. This investigation is what's going to give you the data that's going to help you to answer the question. Once you've got that data, you do some analysis. Basically, use that data, see if there are any trends or patterns in there. It will probably involve a little bit of producing some graphs or maybe some statistical analysis. Once you've done that, you can get a conclusion. And your conclusion is basically just an answer to the question that you asked. Once you've got your conclusion, you then communicate your information, probably by creating some sort of a lab report. Like I've said, the scientific method is something that you will pretty much go through every day of your life. You'll actually go through it several times a day. It's basically just the pursuit of information using common sense logic. Here's me using the scientific method when I'm making a cup of tea. I put the tea bag in the cup, then the water, and then I go and get the milk from the fridge. But as I do that, I think to myself, I bought this milk quite a few days ago. So now I'm thinking, is it okay to put this milk in my tea? So then I check the use by date on the milk and I can see that it's today's date. So I'm thinking, well, if it's today's date, that probably means I've got the rest of today to use it. So I figure, well, to be sure, I'll just smell the milk. And if it smells good, it's good. And if it doesn't smell good, then it's not good. So I smell the milk and I find that it's not so good. <sighs> So then I decide, obviously, I can't put this in my tea. To make the perfect cup of tea, there's a to make the perfect cup of tea, there's a really specific order that you've got to do things in. If you're making it in the cup, first of all, you put the tea bag in the cup, then the hot water. You leave it to brew for about four minutes, and then you put the milk in. If you're making it in the teapot, you put the tea bag in the pot, then the water, you leave that to brew for about four minutes, you put the milk in the cup, and then you put the tea in after the milk. So to recap, if you're doing it in the cup, it's tea first, then the milk. If you're doing it in the teapot, it's the milk first in the cup, then the tea. I can't tell you how important it is that you get this the right way around. So the other day I had nothing going on and I decided to compare the pH of vinegar and lemon juice. That's a normal Saturday afternoon activity, isn't it? So I ask the question, which one is more acidic? Is it lemon juice or is it vinegar? So I go online, do a little bit of research and I find that generally lemon juice has a slightly lower pH, meaning it's more acidic than vinegar. So I predict that in this case with the ones I'm investigating, I will probably find that lemon juice has a lower pH than vinegar and I carry out an experiment to do that. Here, I'm gonna use regular cabbage juice as an indicator. If you've never done that, it's dead, dead easy. All you do is take a little bit of purple cabbage, chop it up, stick it in the blender, add some distilled water in there, and blend it up. After that, just filter it, and you're left with purple cabbage juice. Purple cabbage is a great indicator because it changes color depending on the pH of the solution that you put it in. If you put it in an alkaline solution, it goes more blue than green than yellow depending on the strength of the alkaline solution that you put it in. And if you put it in an acid, it will go more sort of pink if it's a weaker acid and a more intense pink towards red if it's a stronger acid. Now that I know that the things I'm testing are acidic, so what I'm looking for is how much of a intense red, meaning strong acid, or how much of a more light pink is it, meaning a weaker acid. So once I've got my cabbage indicator solution, the next thing I'm gonna do is put all of my samples on a tray. Now in this case, I've got two samples, but I've got four of each. It's really important in a good quality scientific investigation to have repeats to make sure that you get the results many times over. 
I've also got a third sample here. This one is actually just plain water. Now, the reason I'm using water is as a control. A good scientific investigation always has a control to make sure that the change we're observing is because of acidity and not because of possibly some other effect. So here are my results. I've got a slightly lighter pink color with the lemon juice and a slightly darker, slightly more red color with the vinegar. This tells me that because the vinegar is slightly more towards the red side, this is slightly more acidic. This tells me that my hypothesis was wrong, that actually the vinegar I've tested is more acidic, has a lower pH than the lemon juice that I tested. Also notice that when the indicator was mixed with the water, there was no change. And this tells me that any changes in color I'm observing are a consequence of acidity. So maybe you're at home and you're about to go out and you're thinking, what's the weather like? Is it raining? Do I need a jacket? Now what you could do is sit there and, and just hazard a guess and say, well, I think it's probably not raining. But unless you actually go outside and run that experiment, put your hand out, feel if there's rain, then you don't really have any basis for that information. Unless you go through the scientific method and run your experiment, you've got no basis to make a conclusion. What I'm saying is that the scientific method is something that everybody goes through just to collect information. Sure, it might not be formalized, it might not involve collecting data that you're gonna put into graphs, and you might not communicate that information with other scientists, but nonetheless, it doesn't change the fact that this is a basic process that everybody goes through to get information.